Okay, what is up there YouTube? Uh, this is J-Man Time and today I have a video on rare and experimental weapons that were used or developed during the Korean War of 1950 through 1953. Now, during the Korean War, both the U.S. and Chinese-backed forces used a variety of rare and experimental weapons during the war, but there were also a bunch of weapons that were designed for the Korean War, infantry weapons that were designed for the Korean War that were never adopted or were only used in very limited numbers. So let's go over some of the rare weapons or rare infantry weapons and rare prototype weapons that were designed to be used during the Korean War of 1950 through 1950. 53. And the first weapon on the list actually comes from South Korea, and that is the ROK Type 18 Korean People's Rifle. And this was an experimental bolt action rifle designed sometime between 1950 and 1953, but some sources state that this weapon was designed in 1951. This weapon was a bolt action rifle fed by E Blanc clips, the same E Blanc clips used in the American M1 Garand series of semi automatic rifles. The weapon was chambered for point 30-06 Springfield. It would have an 8 round E Block magazine and a effective range of about 1,000 yards or 700 to 1,000 yards. Now only 18 of these weapons were ever produced which is kind of strange as this weapon is called the Type 18 and these weapons were produced during the middle to early part of the Korean War at least the early to middle part of the Korean War, and they were designed to be used by the South Korean forces. Now, it is unknown if these weapons were actually used in combat. In fact, these were only found in recent years, in recent decades, amongst a variety of other Korean War weapons stored in South Korea. Some of these weapons actually went up for sale on various auction websites, and that's actually how I got the images that you see here today. These are some of the rarest bolt action rifles designed during the Korean War, and it's unknown how many of these rifles were actually developed. It could be anywhere from 50 to 100, but only 18 of these weapons survive to this very day. And this is pretty much one of the rarest weapons of the Korean War, and one of the rarest weapons used by South Korean forces, or at least developed by South Korean in forces during the, the Korean War. War. Cook, so many rifle known as the Cook Model 1951, sometimes called the Cook model 1954. Now this weapon was designed between 1950 and 1952. Some other sources state that this weapon was designed between 1952 and 1954, but this weapon was designed during the Korean War. And this was a bullpup modification of the Browning automatic rifle, the BAR, which was the standard squad automatic rifle being used by the U.S. Army during World War I, II, and during the early part of the 1950s, before the bar was eventually replaced by the M14. This weapon also used the standard 20-round bar magazines and had a rate of fire of about 500 to 600 rounds per minute, just like the standard BAR series. And this weapon was pretty much a lighter Browning automatic rifle in a bullpup configuration. This is actually one of my favorite Korean War era prototypes that never made it. But ultimately this weapon was rejected just like the previous two Cook rifles. But it was at least a much more interesting design than the standard semi-automatic prototypes that were being produced at this time. Lauren C. Cook also developed several submachine gun prototypes, and these were all telescoping bolt submachine guns, similar to the Uzi and other submachine guns being developed around the same time period. And the first one was the Cook Model 1, also known as the Cook Model 1950, or sometimes referred to as the Benicia Arsenal Model 1950. And this was a prototype or experimental machine pistol designed in 1950, the start of the Korean War. There were two versions of this gun, one chambered in the 9 by 19 millimeter parabellum and a second version chambered in the .45 ACP. These guns were fed by either 32 round 9 millimeter magazines or 20 to 30 round M3 M3 grease gun magazines or Thompson submachine gun magazines. 
they had a rate of fire of between 500 and 550 rounds per minute and an effective range of 150 yards. These were some of the more advanced submachine gun prototypes designed during the late 40s and early 50s. Keep in mind, the US wouldn't have a standard issued telescoping bolt submachine gun until the MAC-10 and the MAC-11 series later on in the 1960s and 70s. So this weapon actually was 10 to 15 years you know, older than this telescoping bolt submachine guns that we would develop later on during the middle part of the Cold War, towards the middle and later era of the Cold War. So it was a pretty cool and interesting design, but ultimately it was rejected. There was a second version of this gun designed in 1951, known as the Cook Model 1951, and this was a standard machine pistol, as in, it was no longer a telescoping bolt submachine gun, instead it was a submachine gun that had a standard pistol grip. And this weapon was also submitted for testing, and both of these weapons were ultimately rejected. And it was actually kind of a shame. I actually wish this weapon was used in the Korean War. Just imagine if US, if U.S. forces had this weapon in the Korean War alongside their M3 grease guns, their Thompson submachine guns, and their Rising submachine guns. But ultimately, that didn't happen, and these weapons were pretty much abandoned after 1951. The next weapon on the list is the American M25, also known as the 3.5 inch 90 millimeter repeating rocket launcher from 1950. And this was actually an experimental or limited production repeating anti-tank rocket launcher designed between 1950 and 1952. This weapon used the 90 millimeter heat round, which was a standard anti-tank round used by most American um, bazooka types that were used during the Korean War. Keep in mind, during World War II, the bazooka became the standard issued American anti-tank rocket launcher. But during the years between World War II and the Korean War, the US Army actually experimented with enlarging the bazooka. In 1952, the U.S. military began testing or field testing the M25 series of repeating rocket launchers. And this was pretty much a bazooka with at least a magazine well that allowed you to load more than one, one rocket into the bazooka each time. So this weapon was like a semi-automatic rocket launcher, basically. And it had a armor penetration of 280 millimeters. Its accuracy range was only about a thousand yards. Beyond a thousand yards, you probably wouldn't miss the target. And only 1,500 of these were ever produced, and only a few hundred actually saw frontline use during the Korean War. It was an okay weapon, but many soldiers preferred the standard issued M20 series of super bazookas that were already being used during the Korean War, along with the M18 recoilless rifles and M18 that recoilless rifle substitutes being used already on the battlefield. So this weapon was actually pulled off the battlefield after only being used for a year. The next weapon on the list is the M27, also known as the 105 millimeter. And this was actually the original limited production prototype of the future M40 series of recoilless guns. And this was a heavy vehicle mounted recoilless gun designed between 1950 and 1951. And it actually saw some limited use during the Korean war in 1952. This weapon used a 105 by 607 millimeter M32 heat round or anti-tank round. Its armor penetration was 400 millimeters and it had a range of 6,870 meters. That was its maximum kill range against armored fighting vehicles, but it could also be used as a artillery piece. Now this weapon was actually used on the front line on several occasions and it was a vehicle mounted recoilless gun, meaning it was usually mounted on either Jeeps or half tracks or in some cases just your standard army issued pickup trucks. And the Americans would later reverse engineer this weapon into the M40 series of recoilless guns that became the standard issued recoilless gun in the US armed forces during the early part of the Cold War. Now let's talk about some of the rare weapons used by the Chinese forces. During the Korean War, the Chinese mostly used either copies or modifications of previously existing designs 
although manufactured now in China and using different calibers than they were originally intended to use. So the first weapon on the list is actually the Chinese Sten Mark II. Now in 1942, back during the Second World War, the British Empire actually produced the Sten guns for both the Chinese nationalists and some for the Chinese Communist forces. During the Chinese Civil War, the Chinese Communists eventually took over all of the manufacturing plants for the British Sten gun in China, and they later reverse engineered the Sten gun to fire the 7.62 by 25 millimeter Soviet cartridge or Tokarev cartridge, which was the standard issued pistol, pistol cartridge for Chinese Red Forces both during World War II and during the early Cold War years. This weapon was chambered for the 7.62 millimeter Tokarev and was fed by a 32 round PPS 43 magazine instead of the standard Sten gun magazine. In total, the Chinese communists would convert at least 45,000 of these Sten guns into the 7.62 Tokarev cartridge during the years before the Korean War, and they were issued alongside a variety of other modification of other modified Western submachine guns being used by the Chinese and North Korean forces during the Korean War. And this wasn't the only gun to be used in this way. During World War II, both the Chinese Nationalists and the Chinese Communists also modified a variety of American Thompson submachine guns and also made their own copies of the Thompson submachine gun chambered in a variety of different cartridges from 9mm Parabellum to 7.63mm Mauser and even the 7.62mm Tokarev cartridge. The Chinese Communists would continue the manufacture of the 7.62 millimeter version of the Thompson submachine gun both before and during the Korean War. And these were issued to both Chinese and North Korean ground forces during the war alongside the Soviet weapons like the PPSH-41, the PPS-43, and a variety of other submachine guns either imported or captured by the Soviet Union during the Second World War and were still being used during the Korean War. Another modification of a Western submachine gun was the Jin Ling Arsenal Type 36 and Type 37 and these were actually modifications of the American M3 grease gun into either a 9mm submachine gun or into a, a, a cheap simplified Chinese version of the standard M3 submachine guns. And these were produced by the Jin Ling Arsenal, which was the standard manufacturer of this particular gun. And these were also used by both Chinese communists and North Korean forces during the Korean War. Only about 40,000 of these were ever produced, with some sources stating that only about 20,000. And there are other sources that state that upwards to 50 to 60,000 of these Type 36 to Type 37 submachine guns were actually produced by the Chinese Red Army during the years before and during the Korean War, and were actually used alongside a variety of other Soviet submachine guns. And my favorite of the rare Chinese experimental weapons from this conflict is the Tung Zhao Arsenal ZB-26, sometimes called the Twin Bren Gun, but in reality it's actually a rare Chinese fusion of two ZB-26 series of light machine guns. And this was an experimental light machine gun designed between 1950 and 1953. It was chambered for either the 7.62 by 54 millimeter Soviet cartridge, but there were some sources that state that there were a, there is a version of this gun was chambered for the 7.62 by 39 millimeter Soviet cartridge, the same cartridge used in the SKS and later AKM and AK-47 series of assault rifles or semi-automatic rifles in the case of the SKS. Now this weapon was fed by two 30 round magazines or two 20 round magazines and had a rate of fire of about one. 1,000 to 1,100 rounds per minute. And this was a limited production light machine gun that was based on the ZB-26 slash ZB-30 series of light machine guns that had been used in China since the 1930s and during World War II as the Chinese also used this, the ZB-26, as their standard issue light machine gun during the um, Second Sino-Japanese War against Japanese forces. This Tang Zhao arsenal was pretty much a redesign uh, or a fusion of an existing World War II era 
barrel light machine gun into a double barrel light machine gun. And this weapon was designed during the Korean War. It is unknown if this weapon was actually used on the front line, as only a handful of these weapons still survive to this very day. Now the Chinese also reverse engineered many American anti-tank and anti-infantry weapons. For example, American recoilless guns and rocket launchers. So let's go over some of the Chinese modifications of existing American weapons that were used during the Korean War. And the first weapon on the list is the Chicom Type 36. The Type 36 was a redesigned or at least a rechambering of the American M18 recoilless gun, which was the standard recoilless gun used during the Korean War. Now the M18 recoilless gun was actually designed at the very end of World War II and had some limited usage during that conflict, but during the Korean War it became a standard issued weapon just like the Bazooka series. Now, the Chinese got their hands on some of these M18 recoilless guns during the Second World War also and during the Chinese Civil War since the U.S. supplied the Kuomintang or Kuomintang forces with M18 recoilless guns during World War II and during the Civil War era. Now, the difference between the Chinese version of the M18 is the caliber. The Chinese simply just scaled up the cartridge by one inch Instead of a 57 millimeter cartridge, like you see in the American M18, you have a 58 inch cartridge, you know, 58 millimeter cartridge instead of the 57 millimeter cartridge. And this weapon had the armor penetration of between 76.2 to 80 millimeters. And it had a maximum range of 4,340 yards or 3.97 kilometers. And this was actually one of the standard issued anti-tank weapons used by Chinese forces during the Korean War, alongside a bunch of American bazooka knockoffs. Another weapon used by the Chinese forces was the Chicom Type 51 or 90 millimeter rocket launcher. And this was pretty much the Chinese version of the American M20 bazooka, but simplified for mass production. Now this weapon fell into the hands of Chinese forces, the M20 fell into the hands of Chinese forces during the Civil War era of 1946 through 1950, and the Chinese began quickly manufacturing these as a standard issued anti-tank weapon for Chinese forces, and they were used pretty effectively during the Korean War, as it was one of the better anti-tank weapons used by Chinese forces, and it was pretty effective against many of the old World War II era M4 Sherman variants, and even some of the M26 Pershings that were being used in the Korean War. And this is also one of the rare weapons that rarely ever gets mentioned. It's not really a rare weapon, as a few thousand, of, as at least 10,000 of these were produced, but it is a rare weapon, at least to most Westerners, as most Americans actually don't know that China actually did copy the Bazooka series um, of anti tank rocket launchers. Another weapon used by Chinese forces is the Chicom Type 52, sometimes referred to as the Type 56. And this was actually a recoilless rifle, a heavy recoilless rifle. And this was actually a copy of the American M20 recoilless rifle, which came out around the same time as the M18 recoilless rifle, recoilless rifle during the Second World War. And again, the Chinese Communist or Chinese Red Army forces got their hands on the M20 from Chinese nationalists during the Civil War. And they later reverse engineered it as the Type 52. And the Type 56 was actually the upgraded version that was used later on during the Vietnam War, but the Type 52 was used during the Korean War as a heavy recoilless gun by Chinese forces, and this weapon was chambered for the, for the 75 millimeter cartridge, but the Chinese upgraded it from the 75 to the 76.2 millimeter cartridge instead, just so American forces couldn't use any of the captured ammunition from Chinese troops or North Korean troops during the Korean War. And that was basically it for all of the rare weapons I could find being used by both American and, Ch and Chinese backed forces during the Korean War. I'm pretty sure there are more weapons out there and I'm still researching right now. And there are a lot of fighter aircraft and tanks that were used during this conflict that were pretty rare or experimental. So I will have to do a video on those in the future. Until that time period, which of your favorite of these rare prototype infantry weapons were your favorite from the Korean War era? If I had to choose, my favorite would be the 
Cook submachine gun prototypes that were meant to be used, but in terms of weapons that were actually used during the Korean War, I actually like the Chinese Thompson submachine gun as that is pretty interesting. But I also like the South Korean Type 18 bolt action rifle, as many Westerners had never heard of the of this rare South Korean bolt action limited production rifle from the Korean War era. So what do you all think of these weapons? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.